Okay, so availability on the Raspberry Pi 4 is very bad and doesn't seem to be getting any better anytime soon. Uh, the Pi 400 is still reasonable. Uh, you can still get them in, in quite a lot of places for a sensible price as well. But uh, what about older Pis? So this is a Pi 1. Uh, this is the 512 megabyte version, which was the second version that came out. Now I got this back in July 2021. I haven't really done anything with it, but at the time it was £12, which I thought was a very good price for an original Pi, and I figured at some point I'd make a video with it. I also, uh, about two weeks before that, bought a Pi 4, 4 gig, uh, second hand for £50, which was quite reasonable at the time, certainly looks more reasonable now. So the first Raspberry Pi came out February 15th, 2012, and the 512 model, this model, came out October 2012. So that's 10 years ago, and I thought I'd see how well it performs. I've been playing around with overclocking and various different things. You can see I've got uh, active cooling on here. The Pi Moroni fan shim just fits straight on and works straight away. Haven't tried to get it to come on and, and go off with the temperature, but I'm happy that it's on all the time, and it keeps it nice and cool, which I'll show later on in the video. Now, if you're not in the UK, you're probably unaware of CEX, but basically uh, CEX sell all sorts of second-hand electronics. It's a great thing to have in the UK, and I'm sure you have similar things in various different countries, but just to give you an idea of how much you can get the older pies from. So I've gone to low to high, and let's see where the pies start coming in. So Pi Model B, so this is the one I've got. For some reason it says no RAM. Uh, it must have RAM, it must be 256 I'm imagining, but £12, so what I paid for my 512 one. Then we've got my Pi Model B, which is already £3 more than I paid for it, the 512 model, which I think is, is a sensible price, and also for retro gaming, is pretty decent, really. So we've got Pi Model A+, Plus, Model B 256, I'm not sure why that one is more expensive at £18. Pi 2 Model B, £18. Pi Model B+, Plus, which I think had extra USB sockets or something, I'm trying to remember, I, I had, I'm sure I bought one of those. Uh, 22 pound. I had an original Pi as well, but I didn't keep it. And then there was this one. Um, whether people can shed light on this, I couldn't find a lot of information on this. Raspberry Pi Model B, one gig. So was there a one gig model of this particular Pi? Um, I, I couldn't find much on it, but maybe it came out at some point later, but 25 pounds. But that might be interesting. B plus, no mention of RAM. Pi 3 starts to come in at 38 pounds, so the Model A plus. The Pi 3 Model B, £45. The B Plus is, is the one that a lot of people want. It's the step under the Pi 4, but still pretty decent spec. Uh, and they're £50 at the moment. Pi 4 2 gig coming in at 60 so more than I paid a year ago, which is uh, to, be, to be expected. Pi 400, look, 4 gigs, £75 for a kit. I thought that was brilliant. Uh, and then, oh, Pi 4 4 gig on its own, £80. Pi top laptop for a Pi 3B Plus, that's pretty good at 85. 8 gig Pi 4, 115. So what should we expect from performance from this 512 gig original Pi? Uh, well, let's try RetroPie and see how we get on. So menus wise, pretty snappy. I can flick through the various different systems nice and quick. Uh, updating systems does take quite a while. Uh, let's go ambitious with PlayStation Portable. Uh, which is not that old a system really and let's try a bit of 4x4 jam which was a, a PlayStation game but it was like the one you got from the PlayStation store so not like a full game so all the menus feel all right you can see we're showing 60 FPS this is a single core device uh, so clocked at 700 megahertz as standard but uh, I'm running it at 1050 but I'll go through the overclock settings in a minute so all of this seems all right the audio's all right uh, but with frame skip on, we are we are a bit jerky. <laughs> um, it's I mean it's moving. It it's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I really didn't expect this sort of performance. You can see that it says about uh, frame skip and so on. But uh, yeah, better than I thought. But if I go back, I don't really expect this to run at all because this is a pretty full-on looking game. All oh, the menus feel really nice and snappy. Okay, but it quits out to menu. So let's go a little bit less ambitious, and we go for SNES. And moves nice and fast, really responsive, feels really like an arcade game. Uh, 
Oh, cows are coming. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. The sound is perfect. It's nice and fast. Feels really good. So Virtua Tennis on the Game Boy Advance. All the menus and the music and everything are fine. Yeah, it seems to be working fine, even though I'm losing 1540. Just give it one more go. And see. Yeah, it's definitely nice and responsive. And the music is fine. Perfect. So Mega Drive, Micro Machines 2. Oh, yeah, it's also absolutely fine. The sound is fine. It's lovely and fast. And is a very good game, especially the multiplayer versions of this game are amazing. Yeah, happy with that. So Duke Nukem 3D, audio is a bit loud, but everything seems to look alright. So Duke Nukem is running brilliantly, although I don't seem to have a shoot button. I probably need to configure that somehow. Is my left? Oh, my left. Oh, my mouse is working. Oh, let's use, I'm using my joystick and my mouse at the same time. But you can see that, and I'm using a trackpad as well, that's why my mouse movement is so bad. But uh, yeah, that, that is working brilliantly. Very nice to see, you needed uh, a reasonable PC back in the day to be able to play this. And we can play it on a Pi 1. I could keep playing that, but I need to try more games. And that was installed through the optional packages on RetroPie. Um, I've got a separate video on, uh, well, three stages of RetroPie if you want to know more about running RetroPie, optimizing it, and various other things. So PlayStation, uh, Porsche Challenger couldn't get to launch, but I'm not sure if, it's, um, if the ROM's not good. But Parappa the Rapper works, and this is a great game to play in a group of people. You can see the video play is absolutely fine. I'm not sure if the buttons are configured correctly, or if I can't remember how to play the game. I'm not sure when I'm supposed to be pressing the button. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, so I think I've covered most of what I wanted to show on this, but as you can see, the menus work well. Uh, Duke Nukem was brilliant, and uh, I was surprised to get PSP running as well as I could. But you really need to stick to those older systems. Uh, I did put Dreamcast on it, but it wouldn't let me install the emulator and Dreamcast was going to be too ambitious, I think, anyway. Uh, Sega Saturn runs terribly in emulation on most systems. Even the Pi 4 really struggles on the Sega Saturn. Some games are passable. But yeah, it, better than I expected, definitely. Right, let's shut this down. So I've installed the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS on this, and I wanted to show you the overclock settings. I do like the lights on the older Pi. Uh, they did it very cool, all the different colours and the amount of lights that are on there. Now you can run the Pi without a graphical user interface, which definitely runs better in the case of the original Pi. But uh, it's it's reasonable. I can access my NAS drive, I can um, access the terminal and various different things in that, and it's working. The menus are okay, um, but if you launch something like Chromium, it is awful. Uh, I tried to install Puffin. Tried to install various different emulators and couldn't really get anything to work. Um, but let's show you NeoFetch because I wanted to show you my overclock. So if we have a look in here, uh, so it, it reports it as 1.1 gigahertz. Remember this is a 700 megahertz machine and it shows you how much memory it's using out of the 512 megabytes. But if we go into config.txt, uh, we can see, so ARM frequency 1050, these are the settings I used. I think Amir from the uh, Windows Discord gave me these settings to try on a Pi Zero W, and they worked very well on that, and I thought this is the same CPU, so let's give it a try. And it's been absolutely fine, so core frequency 550, SD RAM frequency 550, you can't overclock the RAM on the Pi 4, but you can on some of the older Pis. Over voltage of 14, quite high, force table equals 1. But if you have a look at the top, and I went straight from RetroPie into this, and I'm running an operating system, I'm running at 1050, and it's at 34 degrees. So it is lovely and cool with the Pi Moroni fan shim on it. But yeah, even things like certain menus, so we go to preference, and what should we do? Uh, Raspberry Pi configuration. You can see this sort of thing 
is really quite slow. Uh, I'm running it from an SD card, not a fast SD card because I didn't really bother. Um, but the, the main bottleneck is the fact that it's a single core uh, processor, which really does hamper things. But for certain things, it's usable, file management, copying things to files. Um, but obviously the maker side is still a huge bit of this. So if you are using this to control lighting, work with some cameras, various different things are still gonna work absolutely fine on this because we are talking about the same sort of power as the Zero W, which loads of people use for maker stuff. So I also wanted to show uh, from Imager uh, how easy it's got compared to what it used to be like because we didn't used to have Raspberry Pi Imager and we had to basically find things and download them and things like that. And it was just a lot more complicated owning a Raspberry Pi. It's very easy owning a Raspberry Pi now. You can see this takes a while to start up. I wasn't sure if it was even gonna work then. I cut that bit out because it took ages. Right, so choose operating system. And you can see here, we've got the 32-bit version of Bullseye, which is what I put on this Pi. Um, but also, if we go into the gaming side of this. You can see that we've got Recall Box, RetroPie and Lacquer. I should have done Lacquer really, but I've, I've spent quite a while on this and I've, I've got Recall Box still to show. Uh, but RetroPie, if I click on that, you can see RetroPie 4.8, Raspberry Pi 1 stroke 0. Uh, and then we've got a separate version for the 2, 3 and the 0, 2W. Uh, but if we go back, we've got Recall Box and you can see here we've got a version for a Pi 4, Pi 0, 2, and we've got the Zero One and the Pi One. And if we have a look at Lacquer, this is really interesting. You can see we've got the usual Pi stuff here, including the Pi and the Pi Zero. But then we've got handheld devices and other devices. So we click on handheld devices. So we've got the Pi Boy, the Retro Dreamer, the GPI case, and other devices. And we've got PC and Rockchip, All Winner, and Amlogic, which I was just really surprised to see different systems, different architectures that aren't Raspberry Pi in Raspberry Pi Imager. I like it. I think I think it's a really nice open approach to take. Uh, NXP, Rockchip Handheld, Exynos, uh, just really, really impressive. So anyway, I installed the uh, Recall Box version in this Pi 1, and let's have a look at that. So Recall Box looks really, really nice, but I think it's probably a bit over the top for a Pi 1. Uh, so I've got my Xbox controller in, which all configured really nicely. You can see the presentation is excellent. Uh, all the menus and everything are very, very user-friendly, more user-friendly than RetroPie, but I find RetroPie a bit more configurable, uh, maybe just because I'm more used to it. But uh, Recallbox, definitely I'm happy to use it on my Pi 4, but on the Pi 1, I found the performance wasn't as good, but then I couldn't get the resolution to stay low. Uh, so I kept trying to get it to 640 by 480 and it kept defaulting back to either 720 or 1080. And that's obviously going to have a big impact on game performance on a system that's only got a single core and is only uh, you know, running qu at quite a low clock speed. So uh, the ports that come built into this are Doom, Quake, uh, there's like a modified version of Doom and Wolfenstein. Doom doesn't run that well and definitely not as run as uh, well as Duke Nukem was running in RetroPie. But again, I think this is probably just a resolution thing. You can hear the audio's kind of stuttering a bit. Uh, and if we go into the game, it just is a bit slow. Uh, and yeah, isn't isn't running anything like Duke Nukem was. Um, but there's probably something I can change on that. And as I say, it's not keeping that low resolution and it really needs to be. So let's quit out of that. Wolfenstein definitely runs better, but it is obviously a lot older game. And on those menus, you you sometimes press the button twice because the the OS is just a bit slower than RetroPie. Again, on the hardware that supports it, actually it probably is more user friendly, and the the presentation does look a bit nicer than RetroPie. Although you can always skin RetroPie and do all sorts to it. I'm not picking a side, I like both systems, and I'm really happy that we've got that, and also Lacquer as well, and Batacera. Now some of this I can't show, because of some of the symbols that show up, but let's just have a quick run around. Oh, I thought there was gonna be someone there. Are they around here? Oh yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> it's not great with the joystick. Um, but you can see that Wolfenstein runs fine. And this whole system has been running brilliantly for such an old device uh, and running at such a high clock speed compared to what it came out as. It's been really, really stable. I haven't had issues at all. And uh, yeah, I'm super impressed with it. Right, let's compare it just to a Pi 4, just to show you a few of the differences. So one thing I've noticed in the test is, uh, especially we're using these little adapters, which I've always got linked in the description, it uses a similar amount of power to a Pi 4. There's not much in it, considering the Pi 4 is faster, but I guess that's just a more efficient processor. Uh, I use this little micro USB adapter. I've got this connected to an official Raspberry Pi 4 adapter, and I didn't have any power issues with everything plugged in. So if I take off the Pi Moroni fan shim, uh, which is a brilliant design. I've had this for a while. It just fits over the GPIO pins and you can configure it to come on and go off at different temperatures, but it works with the Pi 4. It was designed for the Pi 4 uh, from memory. I think it came out after the Pi 4, but it worked brilliantly on this all the way through the test. So really, really pleased with that. Uh, the SD card slot is, um, is not the greatest on this. Uh, you can see why they've used micro SD cards on the Pi 4 and every other Pi as far as I can remember, um, but I'm using an adapter to be able to use that uh, and use micro SD cards because all mine are micro SD cards, but obviously on a Pi 4, the SD card slot is flush, which is really nice. Um, there's more points to secure on these. There's only two sort of holes on this original Pi. Uh, although we have got a dedicated analog jack output, um, although the Pi 4 does support the audio and video through the three and a half mil. So I guess that's kind of the same. Obviously we've got two HDMI outputs on a Pi 4, much superior USB-C as a connection, uh, although I didn't have any issues at all on this 10 year old micro USB device. Uh, obviously we've got these shorter GPIO pins, uh, so we have less functionality on that than we do on a Pi 4. Uh, we've only got two USB 2 as opposed to two USB 3 and two, uh, two USB 2 on a Pi 4, so four USB sockets. So we've definitely had progress. It's just the issue is that you can't get these. Um, I hope it changes soon. Um, the Raspberry Pi is such a great community and they are brilliant devices. They might not be the most powerful devices, but the support is everything. And, uh, and that is a really, really strong bit on the Pi. Uh, I did like having a full size HDMI socket, which is nice, but I get when you've got a dual display, that's going to be tricky to fit onto the board. So would I recommend a Pi 1 in 2022? Actually, yeah, if, if you're just going to use it for the maker side, so things that run well on a 0W, so if you've seen a video where they're using a 0W and uh, size isn't an issue, then the Pi 1 will actually do it very well and it's still nice and efficient using the same chip as the Zero W. Um, and as long as you're gaming on much older systems, so Arcade, Spectrum, SNES, Mega Drive, things like that, uh, obviously if you're going to do PlayStation, Dreamcast, uh, PSP, GameCube and Wii, you're going to need a Pi 4 and even the Pi 4 isn't really powerful enough for GameCube and Wii. There are a few games that run acceptably. Dreamcast runs great. PlayStation 1 runs great. PSP runs great. Uh, PS2 is not great, um, but it does at least run and there's obviously no chance on this. But I think for the £12 I paid, uh, I'm really pleased with it. It is still a great device, uh, but uh, if you could get a Pi 4, obviously get a Pi 4, but you're going to be paying loads more money. But if you want to get involved in Raspberry Pi, want to play a bit of retro gaming, do a bit of the maker side, then if you can get one of these secondhand cheap, then it might be all right for you. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.